D-Day, the German coastal defenses were hit by a naval barrage unprecedented in the history of war. The Nazis manning the fortifications and defending the towns were hit by a torrent of bombs so many and so devastating that the mind cannot conceive their quantity or effect. The German skies were filled with men in white, parachuting down to rip communications, attack airfields and supply lines from the rear. The German railroads, transporting reserves to emergency sectors, were pulverized by vengeance on the wing. foothold in Western Europe. To this, America has a four-square answer, four kinds of power four kinds of attack. The military might of Germany will be smashed and battered and conquered from the sea, from the air, from the land, and from the production line. To the men and women of American industry whose work produced this air power, General Henry H. Arnold, commanding general of the Army Air Forces, addresses this briefing. The United States Army Air Forces is now operating in all parts of the world. Day after day, our 15 air forces strike deep into occupied lands and smash hard blows against our enemies. For the Army Air Forces based in England and Italy, the invasion began months ago. Each day, we send tremendous formations of bombers and fighters over Germany and over France. Each night, the RAF continues the job. These air invasions have two objectives. First, to destroy the German air force. Second, destroy the factories that supply the German army, to bomb and demolish every plant which produces equipment essential to the Nazi war machine, whether it is ball bearings, engines, rubber, gasoline, tanks, or guns. We are bombing them in the factories where planes are built. We're knocking them down when they come up to fight us in the sky and strafing and burning their planes on the ground.
At least another thousand returned to English bases, badly shot up, requiring extensive repairs. The air battles of last year were very small compared to those going on right now and those that we'll have in the future. Your invasion job is to give us all the replacement of planes and equipment in superior numbers in overwhelming numbers. We have the plants and the tools and the workers. The Air Force will guarantee that the German worker can build only one or two replacement aircraft for each five shut down. You must guarantee that we get five planes for every five that we lose. That is your job. The equipment for these attacks, the planes, fuel, engines, propellers, instruments, ammunition, bombs. All these from the production lines and high-octane plants and refineries of America. Look at some figures. For a certain number of air attacks on Germany, for a certain length of time. 12,000 men in the planes, 200,000 men in the ground crews, 3,000 tons of bombs, 11,500,000 rounds of large caliber machine gun ammunition, 120,000 rounds of cannon ammunition, 3,336,000 gallons of gasoline, 160,000 gallons of oil. The number of attacks, a dozen? The time, a month? No, one attack, one day. All of this, to be hurled at Germany in one round-the-clock, full-scale air invasion. Look at one of the planes used in this attack. Suppose you, the individual worker, were to make one flying fortress all by yourself. It takes 23,743 man-hours to turn out this one plane. Starting now and working on an eight-hour shift, you would put the last part in place eight and a quarter years from now sometime in 1952. How long will this fortress last? An average of just 21 days in combat. But for everyone which falls, a legion mounts the skies, bringing to German invasion defenses and to Germany herself only the counter-death and counter-destruction she so richly merits. From the sky above to the earth below, counter-invasion. Here at the Army War College in Washington is the man who leads all American men who fight on the ground. The commanding general of the Army Ground Forces, Lieutenant General Leslie J. McNair, greets the men and women of war production. The German defenses you have seen are formidable. They may even seem staggering, but make no mistake. The guts, the toughness, and the will to victory of the American soldier, accompanied by the equipment of the American worker, are more than staggering. They are unbeatable. Invasion is going to depend on the men we throw at the enemy and the materiel we throw at the enemy. And in the last analysis, it is going to be the foot soldier who pushes his way through that maze of defense on the invasion route. We are using great armies of men they are using a vast amount of equipment provided by the workers back home, the foot soldiers of industry. The men who now deliver the fury of America to the Nazis were trained in England. The ground forces, the foot soldiers, men who once were workers and will be workers again. Harder than Nazi concrete, schooled to kill or be killed. Some of these men have fallen, but for everyone who has, a legion sweeps on, carrying the weapons the Germans appreciate so well. Lead. Flame. Thunder. The final answer will be given by American men 
Sea and air operations accompany our attack, but eventually it is the doughboy who springs from the landing craft, cuts his way through the wire, fights hand to hand with the Nazis in their barricaded cities and wipes them out. On D-Day and the days to follow, the American worker also will be there. He will be the backbone of the attack. He will have made the tools and the equipment which the sea will use, the air will use, and in the heart of the struggle, the infantrymen will use. 